I'm Dr. William Wagner. I'm an obstetric and surgical intensive care uh, specialist with Minnesota Perinatal Physicians and the Department of Critical Care Medicine here at Abbott Northwestern. And I have the opportunity today to present a exciting new program that is in its final stages of implementation through uh, Abbott Northwestern, our obstetrical and intensive care program. We started out with a mission approximately two to three years ago and looked at a collaboration with an already comprehensive high-risk perinatal services and transfer program. Ultimately, we wanted to make a significant difference in the lives of our antenatal, postnatal mothers with critical complications of pregnancy and have gone about dedicating a program to provide comprehensive critical care expertise for our obstetric patient population. The overarching goals uh, was to provide a model of the only program within the Midwest region dedicated to critical care obstetric illness. 24-7 one-call transfer to our unit, which incorporates all the specialists that will be a part of the critical care management of the patient collaboration with our team as well as neonatal physicians, our advanced practice nurses, our pediatric surgical team within the Mother Baby Center, Midwest Fetal Care Center of Minneapolis and St. Paul Children's to provide the most advanced treatment therapies available to ensure an optimal outcome for mother, fetus, and the newborn. Patient care, teaching, and research are the trilateral part of the efforts to provide and improve the state-of-the-art care of critically ill obstetric patients, and that will remain the central focus to enhance and optimize their care, and hopefully to serve as a model for future generations of mothers and babies. We looked at putting together measurable milestones and benefits of our program, training and maintaining up-to-date critical care knowledge, ensuring state-of-the-art care across the system, which can be measured in continuing medical education, simulation, and advancing similar knowledge-based criteria and performance. Improved educational opportunities for our residents and fellows who do not have that availability within their academic training programs. Each of the above highlight this unique opportunity for the mother-baby clinical service line and critical care medicine partnership to provide that training and to be the premier provider for the program. Close and direct bedside critical care, problems will be detected earlier, complications averted and prevented as a primary goal. We all know in the field of critical care medicine that subtle changes in maternal fetal condition are not always reflected in the patient notes, and these can only be detected by serial observation at the bedside. Complex continuity of care will be readily organized within a single obstetric intensive care unit. Our obstetric team will gain knowledge and expertise in hemodynamic monitoring. This will reduce the need to transfer a patient off of our service at Mother Baby to individuals who do not possess the same knowledge base of this unique physiology and hemodynamic variables and attributable to pregnancy both pre and post delivery. Current resources that are available through our program is a seamless continuity with our neonatal team, dedicated nursing cross cover with special expertise in critical obstetric illness, advanced cardiac life support, antepartum fetal heart rate monitoring expertise, in-room 24-7 availability of multi-channel hemodynamic monitor assessment, point-of-care echocardiography, aortic and IVC evaluation, intra-abdominal assessment, as well as DVT and vascular access. It will be a designated critical care bed system within a newly designed critical care unit. The overall partnership, as is detailed in this slide, really begins with our intensivist program and at the center of the focus, the obstetrical patient within the dedicated ICU program. It will include all of our uh, medical specialists. It will include our ICU clinical nurse specialists. It will include our clinical uh, practice coordinators. It will include our social work 
It will include our clinical uh, pharmaceutical team. It will include our dietary and nutritional uh, support. The family as the integral part uh, of the center of that dedicated care. Our neonatal providers, our spiritual care, our respiratory therapy, our OB and ICU, uh, RN and clinical care specialists, our ICU uh, and our perinatal uh, nurse practitioners, as well as our maternal fetal medicine experts. All of this, again, is supported by a team nursing and our perinatal, our critical care, and our cardiac nursing team partnership as well as supportive consultants, which include our neonatal intensive care unit, our neonatal nurse practitioners, neonatology, our lactation consultants, as well as the other multidisciplinary subspecialties. Looking at developing the criteria for uh, our obstetric intensive care program admission, one thing that all critical care units struggle with is that the successful epidemiologic evaluation of any particular disease has several prerequisites. One is that the condition should be accurately defined, it should have measurable outcomes of interest, and we should have a systematic way of data collection or surveillance that allows measurements of the outcomes of interest and associated risk factors. The epidemiologic evaluation of critical illness associated with pregnancy has met with some mixed success for a variety of reasons. It has focused traditionally based on the well-defined outcome of maternal mortality in order to identify illness or conditions that might lead to maternal death. However, we know that the maternal mortality in the U.S. approximates 11 to 12 per 100,000 live births, and the fact that tracking maternal death may not be the best way to assess pregnancy-related critical illness. Death represents only the tip of the iceberg, the size of which is unknown. Each of several conditions complicating pregnancy, pre-existing or complicated by pregnancy, can and are associated with significant complications that have the potential for serious morbidity, disability, and mortality. The stage which the condition becomes severe enough to be classified as critical illness has not heretofore been clearly defined. It is more helpful to consider critical illness as impending, developing or established organ dysfunction that can lead to long-term morbidity or death. It allows the flexibility as conditions can deteriorate quickly. Specific surveillance systems to track severe complications of pregnancy are not associated with maternal mortality are lacking. Most women suffering from critical illness in pregnancy will in fact spend some time in an ICU, but the cases are described usually as near miss mortality cases. The one thing we do know that in all of these situations, two-thirds of maternal deaths, in fact, occur in women who never reach the ICU. Looking at the cause of death in obstetric patients in the intensive care unit by category, hypertensive disease <clears throat> is approximately 26 percent, respiratory, complicated by pneumonia, amniotic fluid, anaphylaxis, acute respiratory distress, acute respiratory failure, pulmonary embolism accounts for 20 percent, Cardiac, Eisenmenger's complex, myocardial infarction, malignant arrhythmias, cardiomyopathy accounts for 12%. OB hemorrhage, approximately 10%. Central nervous system or cerebrovascular accident, 7%. Infection and sepsis, 8%. Malignancy or complications of its treatment, 6%. And looking at admission criteria to our obstetric intensive care program, it is important to recognize that both the pregnant patient with deteriorating health status, secondary to comorbid medical conditions, and the healthy pregnant patient that is unstable from obstetric complications may equally benefit from care in the ICU. Aggressive management in a dedicated obstetrical critical care program versus 
the general ICU of this patient population combined with their overall better health status yield lower morbidity and mortality rates. Looking at the overview of our critical illness by organ system, hypertensive disorders, acute chronic and hypertensive emergencies, all of these categories in fact with specific criteria uh, will provide for transfer uh, either from within the Alina system or outstate uh, into our in obstetric intensive care unit program. Morbidly adherent placenta complexities integrated into our uh, center of excellence for the uh, diagnosis and surgical management of abnormal placentation within the mother baby center. Corrected acquired maternal congenital heart disease endocrine crises including diabetic ketoacidosis, thyroid storm, adrenal crises, infectious diseases complicated by systemic inflammatory response syndrome leading to sepsis, septic shock, and multi-system end organ dysfunction and failure. Renal disease, which will include acute kidney injury as well as chronic kidney disease of any stage, end-stage renal disease, as well as those who may benefit from or who currently are on continuous or intermittent renal replacement therapy and dialysis. Complicated chemical dependency and withdrawal, thromboembolic disease, pulmonary embolism, amniotic fluid anaphylaxis, oncology complications, neurologic including cerebrovascular accident, neurothromboembolic emergency, seizure disorders, eclampsia, and its sequela. Our dedicated team includes a variety of multidisciplinary experts, including 24-7 critical care intensivist team, 24-7 critical care and surgical maternal fetal medicine specialists through Minnesota perinatal physicians, invasive and non-invasive cardiology and including acute and chronic heart failure team through <clears throat> Minneapolis Heart Institute, collaborative educational programs for ICU and obstetric nurses, and state-of-the-art facilities with current up-to-date technology monitoring for both mother and fetus, which include point-of-care focused ultrasound, echocardiography with immediate non-invasive and invasive hemodynamic monitoring, immediate availability of ECMO, both <clears throat> veno-arterial and veno-venal. We have a collaborative team of subspecialists involved in uh, our program, our pediatric cardiology specialists, pediatric cardiology subspecialized in the management of adults with the corrected congenital heart lesions, urology and nephrology, anesthesia team specially trained in the critical care management of obstetric patients with life-threatening maternal cardiac disease, oncology specialists, and cardiothoracic vascular surgery and 24-7 immediate availability. Our dedicated comprehensive medical services also include full respiratory therapy through RCAT, all current modes of ventilator-dependent therapy tailored to patient needs, and underlying respiratory compromise adult and neonatal ECMO, transfusion experts for complications of massive transfusion therapy with ROTEM integration and point of care, continuous remote cardiac telemetry as needed, and the background for our program stems from the recent case series suggests that between approximately one-tenth to eight-tenths percent of obstetric patients are admitted to the traditional ICU. Unfortunately, as we know, this does not include those individuals who would have qualified for our critical care admission, who would have been categorized as near miss, who never made it to the intensive care unit. The risk of death ranges from approximately 2 to 11 percent, with mortality substantially higher than the maternal mortality ratio in the developed world. In addition, 1 to 2 percent of all pregnant patients receive critical care outside of a traditional ICU, but within a dedicated high dependency unit. The overall estimates, uh, approximately 1 to 3 percent, as many as 5 percent of pregnant women may in fact require critical care services during or following their pregnancy. Given the obstetric intensive care unit program, unique hemodynamic and other physiologic adaptations that occur in pregnancy pose exceptional challenges in this patient population. 
Knowledge of these physiologic adaptations and specific pregnancy-related disorders is mandatory for optimal management. Dedicated obstetrical critical care ICU program is designed to fit this need and bridge the critical care delivery from traditional ICU units. The benefits of a dedicated ICU not realized by traditional ICU setting include intensive care personnel and team dedicated and trained in the observation and organization of the unit allows for the prevention of complications and early recognition and treatment of complications. Familiarity and cross-training of resources of both invasive and non-invasive monitoring will provide prompt, rational treatment of hemodynamic unstable patients. Continuity of care for mother, fetus, and neonate will be improved before and after delivery. Multidisciplinary teaching program will foster up-to-date information for residents, fellows, attendings to ensure state-of-the-art care to improve quality of outcomes, in particular those rare complications of pregnancy that will need transfer to our quaternary center. It will provide a broad spectrum of patients in which research in the area of hemodynamic compromise related to pregnancy can be maintained and contributions to the literature may be ensured to provide insight into evidence-based critical care management. Integrated program in our patient profiles at <clears throat> Abbott Northwestern, uh, we are a quaternary center of referral for greater than 5,000 deliveries uh, per year within our mother-baby center. We are the referral base for metropolitan and more broadly in-state, out-state, within the Midwest region. Growth potential for the program likely to increase exponentially as the profile of obstetric patients changes. No existing Midwest Regional Center for the Critically Ill Obstetric Patient exists in this current format to bridge this outpatient and inpatient clinical expertise. The program will be integrated into our outpatient program with our maternal, obstetric, medical, and surgical complications of pregnancy subspecialty clinic. It will provide seamless program to enhance the overall quality of care with improved outcomes to provide the only dedicated center of excellence in this area within our region. Measurable outcomes for the most seriously ill and at risk for critical illness length of stay, morbidity, mortality, and readmission to ICU will all be put together in a data tracking system as we finalize the implementation of our program. In summary, the overview of the criteria for our obstetric ICU admission, patients requiring intensive nursing care and titrated patient care 24-7. Patients with acute respiratory failure, intubation, or at imminent risk of requiring ventilator support and airway management. Requiring advanced invasive hemodynamic monitoring and or cardiovascular organ support with vasoactive therapy as well as vasopressor and inotropic therapy. Intracranial pressure monitoring advanced cardiac support, right and left heart catheterization, cardioversion, and arrhythmia therapy. Neurologic sequela, multi-system end organ failure from whatever underlying cause. And in fact, as we can see in the continuum, massive hemorrhage, eclampsia, maternal fetal collapse, and unexpected nature of OB complications all provide the egress into our obstetric intensive care unit program. If you have questions or you would like to have a perinatologist from Minnesota Perinatal Physicians meet with your group, please do not hesitate to call us at 612-863-4502 or find us on alinahealth.org slash MN perinatal. If you would like to refer your patient to Minnesota Perinatal Physicians, you can click on the link within the email. It will go directly to our online service request form. Thank you again 
for listening to this presentation, and we look forward to partnering with you to provide exceptional and personalized care for your high-risk patients.